I was craving these Hostess cupcakes so bad today, I just had to cave. Look at all that yummy goodness inside. So bad for me, but so satisfying. It doesn't have an opt-in, but sometimes a craving is just too intense and I have to give in. So I'm not gonna lie, that was my breakfast. When a craving like that strikes as hard as this one did, I indulge. So my question to you today, vloggers, is what do you crave that when you indulge in, it is so satisfying? In the VEDA calendar, it is shout out Saturday. So I'm going to give some shout outs to some of my most supportive VEDA vloggers. Filmmaker and fiery redhead, Christine Morse. I love her Amy from my not so mediocre life. My favorite six year old, Celeste at Find Your Purple. Ms. Lee at Lee Ann Derelick, awesome photographer. And fellow Texan, though I'm Canadian, just living in Texas. Fellow artist and social change advocate, Felicia. Super positive psychologist and upbeat Bostonian, Mr. Greg Matos. Master of geek, he and I would rather eat space food than real food. And my fellow German, all the way on the other continent, Mr. Les Weller. That is my shout out to my VEDA vloggers who have been commenting and supporting and liking and being just awesome community members. So thank you so much. That is my Saturday shout out to all of you. My ultimate shout out has to go to one of my biggest creative inspirations and that is Flora Bally. She is a painter and artist from Portland, Oregon and I took her Bloom True course last year and the things I learned from taking her online class are really the things that I implement into the majority of the work that I do and most of the paintings you've seen in the 30 Days of Painted Elephants project. So super huge sister artist shout out to Miss Flora Bowley. So on to today's painting. Today is day 13 of the 30 Days of Painted Elephants project. And today I'm going to return back to some watercolors. I don't know if you guys have noticed lately, but the sun is rising later. And that always just makes me think of sunrises and sunsets. And I know in the fall in Canada, even this time of year, the sunsets and the sunrises are absolutely stunning. So the inspiration for today's piece is the changing of the seasons and the rise and fall of the sun and how it can be so influential in our lives. I know that in the fall, I start waking up a little bit later. I want to sleep in. So I am very much a rise and fall with the sun kind of girl. So today's inspiration is going to be from the sunset. Let's see what will transpire. My goal here is to create a African sunset and I am fully intentionally wanting my sky to have blooms. So the colors I'm working with are burnt umber, red, yellow ochre and then lemon yellow so i had two different shades of yellow there and i am going the non-traditional watercolor route i know that traditional watercolorists wouldn't want these big lines and these watermarks and these blooms but i am fully intending to do that and i found that one of the best ways to do that is to get a good layer down and then add these deep pigment drips so getting a lot of pigment on the paintbrush and then having things drip. So I want those, those ridges and those lines to be there. And traditional watercolorists would be like, this is not cool, but this is exactly my intention. So I'm just darkening up the landscape, this guyscape 
knowing that when it dries it's going to be quite a bit lighter but those dark ridges are exactly what I want because I'm going to go over and trace them. So I started drawing my elephant ear and I thought no way I've got to sketch this. So I did have a reference photo in mind when I sketched it but I didn't want to make all of those pencil marks on the watercolor paper because that would just not look good. So I sketched it out and then I'm transferring the sketch onto the watercolor paper. Now I am doing this knowing full well that I'm going to go over it again with black. What I haven't decided yet, which I will later, is whether or not to use black watercolor, which I tried right here, which wasn't going to give me the effect I needed without a lot of work. Um, so I decided to switch to India ink. India ink is, I wanted this to be that, you know, elephant shadows on the African sunset. And so I needed this dark black to be totally opaque and not a lot of brush strokes in it. So I moved on to the India ink, which was the right decision. Now it's about this time in the painting where I'm looking at it thinking, okay, I feel like a total sellout because there are bazillion of these African sunset shadow foreground elephants in the world and all over the internet and prints and things like that. So I was sitting here finishing up this black part and thinking to myself, how can I make this my own? How can I put my own creative spin on this design? So I'm just sort of pondering that during this time. And you can see here that that India ink really filled in that black. It is a good solid black with not a lot of brush strokes in it. So I have black India ink and white India ink in my studio and they definitely are good tools to have and they serve a purpose and they will save a lot of troubles later down the road. So this was always my intention. I was always planning to go in with my black micron pen and highlight those ridges. This is an element of my work that I've done before and I knew I wanted to incorporate that so that's why I did the black dark shadow elephants. So as I pondered I thought how can I make this Nicole and I decided to go ahead and add some henna doodles to my elephants. I figured, you know, this hasn't been done a whole lot before, so this was my way of, of taking the concept and making it my own. So I just used reference photos of some henna designs and I went along and just filled things in. Here's where I was trying to decide, you know, how much of the elephant should I doodle on and I, I didn't want to do the whole thing and I thought, you know, I'll just do the front legs and so that will kind of differentiate it and, and you know, I don't want to doodle across the whole elephant because it was at this time as well that I was thinking to myself that there wasn't a lot of white beyond the elephants on this paper so here I was you know kind of struggling once again with how I was going to make this white look cohesive with the rest of the painting it didn't really flow yet so I didn't want to make a whole bunch of doodles all over the entire elephant I'm going in here with some um, white acrylic paint because when you color in on this black ink with the marker, it kind of leaves streaks. So in any area that I wanted to be really strong white and not opaque at all, I 
did the white acrylic paint. I tested my Posca pen and my um, ink on another piece of paper before I went ahead and colored these in and it turned out really good. So I didn't just jump in and make this brave move, I tested it, but I'm really happy that I decided to add this yellow and red because now it really comes together. I wasn't quite satisfied with the composition, so I decided to add this very recognizable African tree. And I think that adding that just really brought the piece together. It was no longer just the foreground and the background. It was nice cohesion and, and I loved it. Well, day 13 of the 30 Days of Painted Elephants project is now complete. You're ready to see it. Hey look, I'm wearing a little safari hat to go on my little elephant safari. There they are, my cute little elephant family walking through the sunset. I hope you enjoyed today's voiceover tutorial and the 13th of the 30 days of Painted Elephants project. I really enjoyed pushing myself today using these watercolors and it took me a while to get the groove of how all of these pieces were going to fit together, but if you watch the uh, tutorial, you kind of got my process and how I worked through that. So thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a thing and hit that like button if you enjoyed watching these little elephants transpire. And be sure to check out my Instagram stories on Instagram at wholeheartedart and the hashtag 30 days of painted elephants. I will see you again tomorrow.